Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Today is Saturday, February 21st, and you know what? It's going to snow again. Oh, my God, I'm so ticked off. I wanted to go to a couple of places tonight, and uh, it might be canceled. So if you're on Facebook, you know, look out for the cancellations. But um, let me give you a heads up. Uh, Crucial Massive, they're a reggae live band. And they were supposed to be playing tonight over at Farmington Avenue, but that's canceled. Hopefully, uh, when I'm my next show or beforehand, I'll give you the uh, heads up when that's coming up. And that's going to be so fun. Oh, gosh. I can't wait for that to come up again. But I want to tell you about another function that's happening. Hopefully, it's not going to be snowing again because it's burr. It's cold outside. You know that. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to get up out of bed. But I did. And uh, this is going to be happening at February 28th. 12 to 6 p.m. It's the African and African American History Bee. And it's edited by Robert E. Dobson. And um, actually, this is going to be taking place at 509 Farmington Avenue, right here in Hartford. And it's going to be one hour intervals. And you get to win prizes. And it's going to be art and other gifts. And uh, if you want to join in, you can pick up the information at also, like I said, 509 Farmington Avenue. And you can also register in advance to participate with Passages Gallery. Just go to Passages Gallery at AOL.com or just call 860-523-3232. And I tell you, gee whiz, um, I'm going to be studying, so I'm supposed to be participating in this one. <laughs> um, Black History, and this is Black History Month, February. And... Um, I hope everybody's getting their education for Black History Month. And um, the Tuskegee Men, it's a good movie, so check that out because it is Black History Month. But with further, without further ado, i like to announce my guest for today. His name is Tony Harrington. He's a singer, a workforce development specialist also. Now I'm trying to find out how he does all that, you know. I like to say, <laughs> welcome, Tony. Thank you. Yes. Nice to be here. And what I like to do is um, have you tell people how you came about being, um, we're going to go to the workforce development specialist. How did you get into that? Well, uh, out of college, I uh, began my first uh, official job with the Urban League of Greater Hartford as a job developer. And it was uh, working through the city of Hartford, the Employment and Training Administration, which dwarfed into JEPA. Uh, the, um, so basically that was my introduction to workforce development. Wow. And uh, then I served as a, a contract representative. At the time, one of my uh, uh, contractors that I was working with was Mark Scheinberg, who is now president at Goodwin College. Oh, okay. And uh, he was heading up Data Institute. I went from there to thinking a little on the entrepreneurial side. So we developed, I developed a business with a friend who was a construction trades training school. And we were uh, funded through, uh, I forget the, the funding agency through the city of Hartford, mm -hmm. but uh, we trained roughly about 40 individuals in the construction training oh, uh, construction. area. Wow. Yes, yes. We had like 14 weeks of classroom training uh, and 12 weeks of on-a-job training. And many of the folks stayed in construction for many years oh, after. Wow. And these were individuals who were structurally unemployed. But mm -hmm. that was my introduction. Mm -hmm. So then, what was their age group? Uh, pretty much 18 to 
35, 37. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I kind of bowed out of uh, employment and training for a while as I worked with uh, the city's uh, minority business enterprise program and then um, went to become a social worker. We were, our office was closed <laughs> uh, from the Croson versus Richmond decision, which basically uh, kind of nullified our activity uh, working with minority contractors. That was basically our our plan, our goal, mm -hmm. our mission, um, and loved it, loved it. But um, we lost funding, uh, so they figured, I guess, since we were working with minorities and women, uh, hey, what better job than to become a social worker? <laughs> so I became a social worker. Oh, wow. And uh, I... I was challenged because I didn't realize that I had basically served as a social worker in all my other positions. Mm, oh my I just goodness, didn't have a title. Yeah. So when I got the job, I had the job, but I didn't have the credentials. So I decided to um, go to the UConn School of Social Work oh, okay. uh, to get my uh, MSW. But by that time, I was done with social work. <laughs> Um, so, uh, what, what, uh, happened, I went back to the urban league, mm -hmm. worked with, uh, we were high school the okay. class of 98. And I want to tell you many of those young ladies and men, because I was finding jobs at Aetna, Cigna, a variety of different, uh, corporations, those women were exceptional. Uh, many of them, most, uh, have received their advanced degrees. It, it's it's just amazing. Wow! Oh my um, goodness. So I I feel proud of that mm -hmm. one year and a half that I was at Weaver. It was mm -hmm. great. It was great, and we occasionally keep in touch. Some okay. Of them. Um, what do excuse I, me? What do some of the women um, graduate doing? MBAs, MBAs. Uh, some in therapeutic type of oh. environments. I mean, they many of them were picked up by the organizations oh. after they completed college. You know, so it it was really uh, they were just dynamic folks. Wow! You know, oh my and uh, I went from there to Tunksis Community College, mm -hmm. where I worked um, in the admissions, the um, uh, what the career development uh, office, and uh, so you know that was great. And then I decided to move to Goodwin College oh, for. Okay a few years as a director of continuing ed. So we brought some really nice programs, more tra transitional programs for uh -huh. young people moving from high school so, to college. Yeah. Loved, loved yeah. that. So when these, these kids come from high school, they have to be, well, actually they have to know what to do when they get out here because it's, it's not easy and it's not easy getting a job. I understand that it's a little bit harder trying to obtain a job, right. trying to get that job. Exactly, exactly. So I, I think uh, those programs, both at, at Tunxis and, and at Goodwin and, and many of the uh, local community colleges, um, they realized that there was an untapped audience of uh, energetic young people mm -hmm. that needed cultivation to some extent in terms of becoming familiarized with the whole college process mm -hmm. and then developing, you know, adequate or appropriate learning skills. Yeah. And so these programs that we had were, were kind of focused on that, provided them credit while they were in these summer programs. And this was also through Capital Workforce Partners. So oh, yeah. that okay. alliance with that organization has been kind of like longstanding. Oh, wow. And you just, you also prepare people uh, for job placement. Well, in my, in my, in my, position now no. uh, I work as a, a reemployment coach okay and we facilitate workshops for the regions unemployed uh, and they just happen to be primarily those who are 45 and above many uh -huh. who have uh, worked in, in an industry for 10 plus years uh, going up to 38 wow. yeah. uh, and uh, they haven't been working on their resumes or developing, you know, new ways to introduce themselves as far as networking or uh, uh, interviewing because mm -hmm. they've been working. Mm -hmm. So now that uh, they're sort of divorced from that environment, mm -hmm. they need uh, 
to uh, enhance or develop, revise some of those skills. Mm -hmm. And that's what we focus on. Um, I work with uh, Jen Fields, oh, okay. who's an exceptional uh, facilitator. And um, I love that job. Oh, great. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So what are the skills that you te people, teach um, people for interviewing? You know, because sometimes you, some people don't know what they're really actually looking for. What type of, do you actually ask them well, the questions or, or in that sense? It's, it's not one area mm -hmm. that, that we focus because mm -hmm. when folks come in, many are, are broken down. I mean, yes. they've, they've had a myriad of, of inquiries to different mm -hmm. businesses, organizations mm -hmm. with little success, even to the extent of not having any interviews. So when they come in, we're first trying to get them to know who they are, right. what kind of skills and assets that they bring to the table, because a lot of them have them, but they don't think about them anymore. Yeah. And we, okay. we talk also about, um, their uh, star stories. People have star stories within every given position that they've held, but mm -hmm. they need to be able to recall them at the point of a question coming across in an interview. Okay, so yeah. we try to get them to do, you know, maybe three or four star stories uh, to to kind of get them in the in the uh, framework of thinking about those things before the question is posed, because when it's already embedded in your mind. Right then it comes out like that. Right. So we, we talk about their, their resumes, you know, basically, you know, when I uh, started looking for another job, uh, I was walking around with objective and references upon request, blah, blah, blah. That's old, that's <laughs> passe. So we're looking, you know, I'll give you the, the general template, uh, summary of qualifications, mm -hmm. you know, identifying your best skills, your hard skills, your soft skills, some of your um, competencies, right. and then identifying uh, possibly, uh, you know, your, your work experience. Mm -hmm. Now, if it happens to be uh, a situation where you have a lot of work experience in another area, but you're pursuing a job in another field, right. then you probably start with relevant work experience and then go down the line from there. Okay. If you have a new certification or or a degree, you probably would put that just below the summary of qualifications mm -hmm. uh, because it's new and you know most people, hiring managers will be looking at the top portion of your resume, mm -hmm. you know, to generate interest possibly. Uh, uh, so there there's there's a lot of things that we cover networking yeah networking that's great is huge. networking is really good um you know developing their interviewing skills mm -hmm. so we'll we'll throw out 56 possible or is it 65 i don't know uh, <laughs> a, a number of of questions uh difficult questions, questions. oh wow. okay uh, what what for them. well can you tell me one of the questions real quick yeah well you know there for instance, someone may uh, may just ask you, uh, well, take me through your resume. Well, you're ill prepared for something like that. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, you're not walking around with a with with a tablet in front of you, you know, with your list of accomplishments. Yes. So, so yeah. but but going into that interview, you know, folks need to be knowledgeable of their background mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, also they need to be able to 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 explain what they did because a lot of folks now or hiring managers, they don't want to just see what the job description entailed because that's what you were responsible to do. Mm -hmm. They want to know what, in addition to that, you did, what, what kind of accomplishments mm -hmm. uh, did you provide to that company during that period of time? So we try to focus on, on them yeah. reining in on, on what is already known. It's just, it just needs to be put, on paper, even the cover letter, yes. thank you notes yes. following the interview, um, and and not being deterred when someone says no or when you don't get a response mm -hmm. from a company. Um, it's a new day, and and things happen, you know, differently. Um, but you have to be determined to just follow through. Oh. And where are you located? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, my office is in New Britain, but we have offices in New Britain, Hartford, Manchester, and uh, Enfield. 
Oh, wow. It's a lot of locations. Yes. And yes. Uh, for someone who's interested in getting involved. They would. I'm glad okay. you asked. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm going to get to that. Yeah. They would come to one of our one stops uh, yes. on a Wednesday or Thursday mm -hmm. at two o'clock. Okay. Two o'clock is when they have what's called CSIS. Okay. And it's an introduction to all of the programs that, that are offered. And uh, they can sign up there. Our program in particular is called the FIRST program. Okay. And we, we uh, uh, start a program every first week of the month oh. uh, for, for our uh, customers. But there are a variety of other uh, uh, opportunities as well as far as um, scholarships for uh, um, uh, positions for certification. Okay. Uh, is there a telephone classes. number? Uh, mine is 899-3503. Okay. I would say our main number is 656, that's 860-656-2500. Wow, okay. Well, wow. we'll be right back with Make It Happen with Tony Harrington, and we'll talk more about that. Okay. okay. Black History Month. We pause to acknowledge and appreciate Contributions enriching our cultural and intellectual fabric. Keep it coming. We are the members of the Saturday Ross and Dance Theater, and we celebrate Black History 365 days of the year. Hi, this is Elijah Williams from Blue Hill Civic Association, and you are watching AccessTV.org. See, kids, I think like the most important thing that a kid needs is the education, because it's not only kids, it's adults, everybody. They all need an education. Without it, you can't get nowhere in this world. That's my that's my perspective, and that's my my opinion. And with Blue Hill Civic Association. It mostly teaches you about business, from writing a resume to filling out a job application. It is a job readiness program for kids that's my age. Well, I'm, I'm 17. So, yeah, it's like for kids my age, near my age, mostly for everybody, because everybody needs to know how to, how to do that. Access TV, I feel like Access TV is like, it's real it's like culture i say that because you know you got different you got different channels and they all talk about different things and in that and in those different things you know you got relationships you got our show blue hill civic association and you also got you know the bible who christ and all that so yeah like, i think it's like Multi multicultural, and yeah, again, you're watching AccessTV.org. Hi, welcome back. I'm here with Tony Harrington, singer, workforce development specialist, which is a lot. And uh, welcome back again. Thank yeah, you. Nice as we were here. talking yes. about what you do now, you've mm -hmm. done a lot yeah. of work in social work and you um, help prepare people to go back out on the job force. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's been a very interesting um, conversation. Um, what I want to do is go back into a little bit of mm -hmm. what you've done, mm -hmm. and because you you said you love your job, which is good. You have to love what you do, and exactly. um, actually helping people is a great help. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing I like to say is, what would you, what type of advice would you give a person who's really trying to um, get back in the workforce and they don't think they they can actually do it, or they feel like you know, 
well, I need a job, but I'm not sure if I can do this anymore. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice? I, I, think, I think the, the first thing I would suggest is going to one of the CSAS uh, workshops on a Wednesday or Thursday mm -hmm. at either one of the uh, one stops, you know, okay. Hartford, New Britain, um, Manchester or Enfield. Uh, and basically sit down and see what types of programs are being offered. Maybe they need to upgrade some of their, their skills, i.e. getting a certification in a particular area mm -hmm. or enhancing some of the knowledge that they already have. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, a lot of opportunities and a lot of money that is available to buffer, you know, that, that cost. Mm -hmm. that many of us are fearful of, you know, attaching ourselves with. And, and to, to be honest, um, there are a lot of people that are fearful of going back to school because possibly they weren't really as successful in the past, mm -hmm. but it's really necessary at this point, uh, especially if you're looking to change fields. Yeah. Um, a lot has changed. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I think that um, I would encourage them to, to do that. And there's a lot of great uh, career agents who basically um, uh, work with all of the uh, uh, young people and mature adults, um, <laughs> you know, through that process. Because a lot of folks have had nothing but success right. leading to this point where now they're separated from work. And uh, sometimes it's just an encouraging word that that looms as the defining factor and them keep keeping you know pushing forward to to um find that work there's there's a poem that um i usually use okay in in our uh, introductions i i pray i can remember it uh, <laughs> but it's called it's called invictus okay and <clears throat> it was a poem that we had to learn as fraternity members you know when i was pledging at the university of hartford many years ago but um but i think the words are, are so right mm -hmm. um but it's it's titled invictus it's out of the night that covers me black as the pit from pole to pole i thank whatever gods may be for my inconquerable soul in the fell clutch of circumstance i have not winced nor cried aloud under the bludgeonings of chance my head is bloody but unbowed beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the terror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scrolls. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Wow. And <clears throat> I guess that's the, the artist in me that, yes. that I'm, I'm, I like to have a little piece of that mm -hmm. in my uh, workshops because right. I've been playing both fields like, like forever, and um, but now it's legit. Mm -hmm. I can oh, I yes. can incorporate that in. Whereas in the past, when I worked for the city, I take a day off, and you know, uh, applying for uh, auditioning for Star Search, and then my pictures in the paper, and you know the the boss is saying, uh, Tony, so what's this? <laughs> <laughs> so now. Now I, I've just found ways, I guess that comes with age, yeah. you know, to find a way to incorporate some of those things that you believe in and Definitely. that you, you know, feel you're, you're comfortable at. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And that's what I want to get to now is your singer. Mm -hmm. And I met, I first saw you at MCC on May and, and I sat oh, okay. down and I'm like, you know, uh, do I want to really get up? The last 15, 20 minutes, I said, you know what? I can't help it. I just got to get up. <laughs> <laughs> and watching you and, and your group and, and touch you. yes, yes, was really, really, uh, it was amazing. You know, Thank I had you. a good time, too. Thank you. And uh, Thank you. tell me how you got into that. I can tell our audience, actually. Well, how you got into uh, many years ago, uh, my cousin, uh, Ronnie Song, and my brother, his sister, uh, we formed what was called the H&H &H Singers. Uh -huh. And we used to sing um, at small churches and some 
in Springfield, Alden Street Baptist Church when it was on Alden Street mm -hmm. and uh, some just a variety of churches. And uh, they were gearing me to be a drummer, my brother to be a gar guitar player. Um, Karen was a singer and Ronnie was the producer. The, oh, okay. The oh. And uh, it was really, really a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and then from that point, you know, we, I, I joined a band in high school um, called Sounds of the North End. Okay. And uh, it was a large band. Um, we used to play at Harambe's and things of that sort. Then I joined a group called Surroundings um, uh, at, with Lance James. And then it was uh, um, Interfusion. Interfusion was a band, very, very nice band, uh, John Smith. Um, uh, who was the leader of the band and had introduced me to it. Loved that band. Um, when we broke up, then I formed Tony Harrington in Touch, which this year is our 30th oh, wow. uh, anniversary. So, um, oh my goodness. Time has sort of been <laughs> flying. Uh, but I still enjoy. Uh, performing yeah. yes yes you know in in the middle of all of that was you know doing anthems for professional sporting events so, oh really um i did you know the whalers for 11 years and then the wolf pack i think for seven following the whalers and uh, the celtics for many years they were in hartford and then uh when they stopped here i was going to boston doing some of those games so mm -hmm. um the anthem has been huge in terms of um, keeping me active in mm -hmm. in the music realm, uh, and loved it. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, had an opportunity to do uh, uh, World Cup of Hockey in Canada. Oh wow! And That's uh, fantastic. there was one time, you know, I I, I went down because we we're in the playoffs, and we we had a a Wheeler song that we had developed uh, <laughs> with, uh, with the guys in, in East Hartford. Um, and I was in a club, you know, had a suit on and, you know, because they did hockey night in Canada, some people actually recognized me. Right. But in this particular club, this guy said, are you a singer? <laughs> and, and I was like, all kind of fascinated. I was like, yes, yes. You know, and then he said, are you Billy Ocean? Billy Ocean. <laughs> I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I mean, um, it, no offense to Billy Ocean. <laughs> you know, it was just that uh, uh, my vision of him mm -hmm. wasn't, wasn't me at the time. I was young. I was like 29 years old. Wow. And, you know, um, it just shocked me. Billy Ocean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it was, it, it was a good uh, moment. Uh, I was there in support of our team because we were in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. It was a seventh and final game and we went into overtime and wow. Claude Lemieux um, scored for Montreal and they ended up winning the Stanley Cup that year. Oh my um, goodness. So I like I like variety, a variety of different right. things, you know. I how, think yeah. How many people are in your band? Uh when we're at full tilt, yes. seven. Uh oh, wow. bass, keyboard, drums guitar and three vocals. Okay, great, great, great. Yes. And um, when I was at MCC on Main, Evelyn Divin Dillon was there. Mm -hmm. She sang mm -hmm. with India Lloyd, which I had a fabulous time. And I'm yes. glad that uh, you had her sing. That's a tall woman. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, well, you know, India um, started working with us when she was 15. I thought she was 16. Oh, wow. And it was um, one of the jazz concerts we were playing in uh, uh, during the summer. Mm -hmm. They have uh, a part following some of the other performances where they have a party. And so we played for that. And and uh, that was our first major introduction oh, to, to India. Yes. And uh, and she's, she's just progressed enormously. It enormously, yes. uh, you know, from that point. So we're wishing her all the best, yes. as well as you know, Evelyn. Evelyn works with us quite a yes. bit yes. as well. And um, I don't know because of the snow and the, you know what? I know it's like almost every weekend these days. It's like it's snowing, 
and you can't go out and have a good time. Right. And it's like, I'm so tired of it. It's like, um, geez, well, you've um, always have been, well, you started out performing now. I've seen it on Facebook, Bloomfield Village Pizza. And um, that seems like a nice place to have. You know, it I is, you know. Yeah. It's not in Bloomfield. When you think, you know, pizza, you're thinking, man. I have live entertainment in a pizza place. That's different. But, but yeah, it is. It is. And the food is good. They have a wide range of, of, of food in addition to your standard grinders and pizzas mm -hmm. and things of that sort. And I think it's just a, a, a nice environment because in Bloomfield, we really didn't have uh, a place for live entertainment. Mm. And so when it was introduced a few years ago, there were, you know, there were, people who were thinking you know it couldn't happen but it's been going on every wow, Friday yeah you know, from that point on so um I'm not there every week mm -hmm. uh, they have a variety of different groups so uh, oh, really? this week was uh just a way to say thanks to many of the folks from the play everything yeah. I miss at home yes um uh Reverend Daryl McCory and his the uh, first lady Carrie yes. yes first I know lady both Carrie. of them yes um you know to, to say thanks to yes. to many of the cast. So we truly hope it does happen, happen tonight. tonight. Yes, it's supposed to be happening you know. tonight at 8 o'clock. Uh, the location is 34 Tunxes Avenue out in Blo Bloomfield. Now, if it's not snowing, I'll be there. All right. Okay? Because right. <laughs> I, I got to go. If, <laughs> and if it does, we'll be at SCATS next Friday. SCATS, so, okay. Yeah. I've heard of SCATS. It's, yeah. it's supposed Middletown. to be nice. Yeah, it's supposed yes. to be a nice jazz place too. Yes. Also, yes. Yeah, I got to check out Scats. Okay. Um, so don't we just want to make sure there's some options. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like to have a good time. You know, <laughs> I love music. So when I have my house, I'm gonna have music all over. You know, the house like the speaker, right. so I can get all my work done. And yes, yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's a pleasure because I asked Tony before. I asked you to come on the yes. show, and you were doing yes. something, and it was in the middle somewhere. Uh, middle of something that you were doing. I think you had your granddaughter you were mm -hmm. watching or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Which, yes. yeah, yeah. And I'm they, glad it worked out too. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. It's definitely my pleasure. It's yeah. been been a minute. Been a uh, minute, yeah. Very, very, uh, very nice. I enjoy it. Yeah. But when he's on the stage, he can sing. <laughs> 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 when he's performing, it's like, oh my goodness gracious. He is uh, fabulous. Um, is there any thing that you like to say out there pertaining to um singing your singing career you know was um, it really was it really easy you know it was really easy for you because you got that I, wonderful no, voice no I, I i would just say that that you know for those who are interested in singing mm -hmm. yes um what i tried to do was to put myself in front of an audience as often as i could that's why i pursued the whaler um, yes. Job. I knew doing the anthem was only a minute and a half. Right. Every time I get out there, <laughs> but that minute and a half in front of fifteen thousand people uh -huh. was going to have some resonating impact on my career. Mm -hmm. So what I learned from that was that sometimes I wasn't at the level that I would have liked. I may have been dealing with a cold or even laryngitis, mm -hmm. but. I found a way to get it done. Some people would come up after the game and say, little kids, um, um, Tony, you sounded different tonight or, or, or <laughs> older people, you know, that, that was a nice Barry white version. Or, you know, <laughs> and, but, but it was just about getting it done. Mm -hmm. And, and I feel like, um, for all that I do, um, it's about getting it done. Yeah. So. And when you perform and when you sing, it's like you interact with people. And that's what I like about you because you were interacting with everybody. It's like, <laughs> OK, yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, I want to thank you for coming on. I want to have you, you on again with some of your group, too. Okay. You know, okay. and um, it's just been a joy just to have you there. And again, I thank you for coming on. Make it I happen. appreciate it. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, I want you to lead us out with a little tune, if you don't mind. Oh Lord! Now you know. Now you know. <laughs> but I want to say before see, we do, yeah. See, well. <laughs> see, you know, there, there's. It's early in the morning, but but there, there was there was a tune that um 
I used to sing. I was brought up with Lou Rawls kinds of stuff. So, uh -huh. um, and uh, what was it called? Um, okay, I goes. <clears throat> Lord, hand me down my walking cane. Boom, boom, boom. Lord, hand me down my walking cane. Boom, 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 boom. Hand me down my walking cane. Because I'm going to take me a stroll down memory lane. Many a girl I chance to love and rule. Many a girl I chance to love and rule. Many a girl I chance to love and rule. Well, not one quite like my land of Lou. and then he goes on and on and on <laughs> but 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 the funny thing is it's just that um when i was in college I was...